while it's uh, daybreak on horizon, the then it's time for the press preview. First look at what's on the front pages of the papers, and we'll start with our sister publication this day. This day has on its front page its headline, Tinibu rewards loyalty over competence, electoral value, religious balance. Let's see the writers there. It says, it says Spirit of 1993 is upon us in 2023. Briefs Buhari in Laura, uh, Matsari stands down. Governor's angry over the decision. Meet president in home state today. Senator pulls out of support campaign groups. APC members quits. Inside details of how party candidate of how party uh, candidate fought for uh, uh, choice partner. Stakeholders turned down Oshomale as likely campaign DG and Khan. It's left for voters to decide it's a perfect choice as kiamo uh, tiku cautions against politics of exclusion then you have um, rwani 2023 maybe nigeria's costliest elections ever in history and then twitter assembles legal team to sue musk over dropped 44 billion dollar takeover let's take a look at the nation newspaper this morning leading with Tinubu says, why I selected Shitima as running mate, uh, that's the APC presidential candidate saying he's placing competence and governance above religious sentiment. And just below that, you have CBN Titans e-payment rules for banks and above the nameplate of the nation this morning, Oshun 2022, APC says, will win convincingly. And just beside that, patrols Casti persist in Lagos, Abuja, and others. That's on page 7. Also, 17 more bodies recovered from Lagos boat accident. The Bantu newspaper is leading with how Tidubu shunned Northwest governors settled for Shatima. Terrorists demand 4.3 billion naira for Kaduna train hostages. That report is on page 19. Manufacturers threaten shut down over soaring diesel prices. And court remands uh, billionaire linked to Kiari drug deal. And Federal Accounts Allocation Committee uh, drops to 2.1 uh, trillion naira in three months. On page 25 of the punch. And fuel hits 250 naira per litre in Abuja and others. All right, uh, the sun, the daily sun. Delhi Sun, Khan, that's Christian Association of Nigeria, others kick a Stinibu Peaks Muslim running mate, why I settled for Shetima, ex Borno governor, APC candidate. It's not good for Nigeria, says Kwan Kwaso, he made right choice, Bulama Okechuku, and then of course at the top mass there, terrorists plotting to attack Kano in DSS custody. IPOB is the one saying that. And then just below that picture where you have the uh, where you have Tinibu, the president, Shetima, uh, Lagos boat mishap, death toll rises to 17 as four more bodies have been recovered. Some international papers this morning. The Independent leading story today, Djokovic claims the crown. That's his photo. The Serbian won his seventh Wimbledon title and 21st Grand Slam after beating Nick Kregos in four sets. Congratulations to him. And just below that, Zahawe vows to publish tax returns if elected prime minister pledge made after independent revealed HMRC investigation. The Daily Telegraph. Now the UK Tory race has expanded to nine uh, with an early focus on tax. Now Truss, Liz Truss says uh, she would cut taxes from day one if she's elected leader of the Conservative Party. I, the I newspaper. Tory race to be next PM a Sunak versus one of the rest. So Sunak is the top gun there. I think uh, we should call in Emmanuel. Emmanuel, good morning and glad to have you and happy uh, Salah. Salah. Uh, Salah. Uh, okay, why? Fine. Barakad okay. Salah, okay. Barakad Emmanuel, Salah. good morning. All right. Okay, well, uh, let's look at this day. It says Tinibu rewards loyalty over competence, electoral value, religious balance. Can you break that down? 
Uh, 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 well, uh, it's uh, the, uh, uh, the way this day uh, coined our story. Uh, it's uh, one of the best, uh, you know, headline for the story because as at yesterday, of course, the socials have already, you know, broken. The, the story was already broken. So you need to actually put some perspective on it, and that's what the this day, you know, headline is doing. Uh, because a lot of people have questioned that choice. Uh, so what, has, what informed it? Uh, Tinubu himself is talking about what informed it. He says it's just competence. Uh, but as you, as you can see, uh, all the groups and all the individuals kicking against it have raised those issues, the issue of uh, Shetima's electoral value, and then even the bigger issue of re the religious balance. Uh, but for Tinubu, he say, well, 1993 is back all over again, and that is upon us. How true is that? Uh, he said, uh, you know, 25 or so years later after uh, the Abiola Kingibe experiment around that issue, he's saying that, uh, well, he can pull it off. But there are people saying, kicking against that and saying that, well, like the papers say, he didn't look at the issue of religious balance. Article is already warning against, uh, you know, a lopsided uh, a situation uh, where people, some people can, can feel excluded. A Muslim Muslim ticket would mean that a lot of Christians uh, will not swallow that. It will, it will look to them as if it's a slap on their face and that it does not make sense. But then Tinubu is pushing back and saying that, look, the situation the country finds itself right now, we must go beyond uh, those uh, kind of things. He said he doesn't want to win pol cheap political points. He said he doesn't want to be politically correct. He said he just want to do the right thing. So and for him, this is uh, the right thing. Uh, but of course, people are bound to question that the whole of today. Already it was talking points yesterday around even, you know, uh, little, little cycle where people gathered yesterday across the country uh, to look at it, especially the Christian side who are wondering what's going on. Uh, it, it does not, his ticket doesn't seem to reflect the coloration of this country. It doesn't look like our people. Our people are made up of uh, both faith and even maybe other faith. So, um, but he's saying that, look, this is about competence. And there are people who ask him whether uh, there are no competent people among the Christian folk, especially the Christian North, uh, a constituency that is also very large. Uh, they are bound to wonder whether he couldn't find any uh, competent person there. A lot of people have thought it was going to be either Lalong, uh, Boss Mustafa, um, former Speaker Dogara, all those sort of names that people have raised in the past. Christian Northerners uh, to balance the ticket. Uh, because you can see every other presidential candidate is making some effort to play uh, some balance, balancing game here, yeah. and like this, they said it. Uh, this ticket uh, did not uh, reflect that at all. It's uh, it's really, really, you know, whether you like it or not, secluded other people. But for him, it's about winning election, and he think that this ticket uh, will, will really uh, win it. But we are seeing already the reaction and all the protests that's going on. Yes, Emmanuel, and uh, the gov some governors of the APC who do not agree with his speak are set to meet the president today. And I like that you brought up the uh, important part of uh, Tinubu saying he paid Kashim Shetima based on competence. I was going to ask you how competent really is Kashim Shetima? And does this uh, decision made by the APC presidential candidate show some sort of disconnect uh, by Tinubu and, like you said, the coloration and the diversity of Nigeria. And also, there's another headline on this day that I'd like you to touch on. Rewan says, uh, this is a member of President Buhari's Economic Advisory Council. He says, 2023 general election may be Nigeria's costliest elections ever in history. He's estimating 6 trillion naira to be spent to win that presidential election because definitely there's so much at stake looking going forward to 2023 elections. Well, uh, yes, uh, if you look at uh, the issue of uh, Shetima's competence, uh, you look at his record when he was governor. Uh, that, that is where you begin to look at. And I think for Tinubu, who is always about, you know, competence, about uh, who can do the job, who can deliver, uh, Shetima, he said, that, you know, give or take, especially his choice of Zolum. Uh, a lot of people, uh, Governor Zolum, the, co the current governor of Brandon State, a lot of people, he got a lot of uh, applause. Uh, did he run the state very well? Well, he was governor when Brandon State was going through a lot of crisis, still going through a lot of crisis with his urgency and all of that. Uh, so that needs to be fact-checked by the rest of us here to see uh, to be able to measure that competence that he, he's talking about. But now, uh, the greatest criticism against this choice is the fact that it is not reflective of who we are as a people and that it, it, it took away the issue of balance. And even 
electoral value because like even uh, they did this story is pointing out uh, the only kind of votes Shetima has won in the past seem to be the five percent uh, Kanuri vote uh, that is always uh, uh, you know Ghanari in Borno State. So that's why I say it needs a lot of fact checking to see how this will help. Because when you're picking your VP, you're also picking someone that can help you with the elections, with the numbers, with the votes. Uh, what you cannot, if Tinubu, for instance, think he can bring in the Southwest, he, need, he needed someone that can galvanize the North, that can get the votes of the North. Is Shetima strong enough to do that? Uh, those are the issues that I think uh, a lot of people will be looking at. But beyond that, uh, I think people have looked at the spirit, the morality of this team and they are wondering whether it has not really, really excluded uh, a larger part. But the other bigger problem uh, in Kachi is the issue of the governors themselves. Uh, I think they expected one of them uh, to have uh, uh, taken that. And the fact that he's also not done that, uh, it's also a huge problem. Uh, the paper is reporting that they will see the president today uh, to, look, to look at those issues. Uh, at the end of the day, those are the kind of things that will determine whether this ticket is going to fly or not. The issue of acceptance, uh, what Shetima can do to rally that base for, uh, the, uh, for Tinubu uh, to bring in the kind of needed votes. Can he do that? Uh, will he be able to be all embracing, all encompassing? Can he build bridges across this divide, the, the, especially the religious divide? How best can this team now actually appeal to the Christians uh, in the country that look uh, they are represented? Some people say that, well, Bola Tinubu's wife is a pastor, but is that, <laughs> will that be? Be able to assert the the kind of you know uh, despondency. Already we are seeing reservations in high places. People saying that look, they cannot go with this, and that is a slap on the face of a certain huge demography uh, of the country. So those are the kind of crises that this ticket is faced with. Well, Emmanuel, we look forward to see to seeing how this pans out. Um, of course, uh, we're expecting an election and. That election may not happen if the country is not secure. The Punch newspaper is reporting that the terrorists are demanding 4.3 billion naira for the Kaduna train hostages. Uh, meanwhile, if you go over to uh, the Daily Sun, say the terrorists are planning to attack uh, the leader of the IPOP in DSS custody. Meanwhile, in Abuja, we're told that we need to watch out because they've made plans to attack soft targets and so we just have to keep our eyes at the back of our heads as well and we've seen over the weekend uh, um, passengers from some of those passengers at least seven of them have been released Emmanuel one of the demands of these terrorists was the release of their comrades in prison they broke into that prison last week Tuesday and they freed them and less than a week later, in fact, less than three days, uh, they've released some passengers. What's this one of the exchanges happening? Well, well you see, Kenneth, actually, people have made that kind of con the connection you just made. And it's a bit, it's a bit curious that you had that, uh, you know, that uh, prison break and then you have this release. Uh, is, it, is this coincidence or is it the same thing or what must have happened? But what we're reporting this morning is the demands. Uh, that those, uh, this, uh, they are made, uh, making on those, uh, you know, the Abuja train uh, passenger. And you can see uh, the uh, almost abnormal kind of, you know, amounts that, uh, uh, you know, they are calling for four points, uh, uh, running into billions of naira. Um, but uh, Tukumamu, who has been making the negotiations, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, announced the good news of the release of the seven of those abducted uh, uh, passengers the other day. What happened here? Was it a case of, uh, a prison, uh, of, of hostages swapping or, or what happened? That needs to be looked into. Uh, Kenneth, like you're saying, a lot of people uh, seem to have suggested that they seem to be you know, some, some kind of nexus or some kind of connection with that. But the overall picture, the overall crisis is that, look, whatever, no matter how you look at it, Kenneth, like you're saying, we need to all watch our backs. Right now, the biggest issue on the mind of everyone is what next? Uh, what's going to happen again? What, what, have, what have we seen? What was the next thing that will happen? So this is a worrisome uh, you know, trajectory this has taken. And it's something that a lot of people are still worrying about, wondering what's going to happen today, tomorrow, during the holiday season uh, that ends tomorrow, what's going to really happen this time? Yeah, has the security, already the security chiefs say they meet every day now. Uh, will that move the needle a bit to uh, give us safer uh, communities and safer, uh, safer, city, uh, safer cities or how do we deal with this? So those are the issues. Uh, a lot of people are expressing despondency, frustrations, and um, uh, what the federal government needs to do is to restore hopes. That, that story of the release uh, the weekend really you know, helped 
in um, you know bolstering the the hopes of families. But again, like you say, Kenneth, uh, everybody is on the watch out to see what next and what could happen again. Uh, demanding a whole lot from the federal government to see that we have better uh, secu uh, security gets better. All right, Emmanuel Bello, I'm afraid that's all we'll leave it for this morning. Thank you on this day of summer.